The boy Ash Ketchum has been catching and training Pokemon for 23 years now, so it's safe to say that he's caught and used quite a lot actually. Now you might have seen some videos about his best Pokemon, but now it's time for me to go over who I believe are the best Ash Ketchum Pokemon of every type. Now keep in mind that I'm not just choosing Pokemon based off their strength, but also other factors like personality, overall development, and how well they represent the typing. Also, no repeats. If I use one Pokemon for a certain type, I'm not picking them again for their other typing if they have one. Now I know how these things go by now, there's bound to be some debate from this, especially for a certain typing. But let's just respect each other's opinions and have a good time, okay? We're doing things alphabetically this time, starting with Ash's best bug type, Heracross. Although Levani's pretty decent, it could not top Heracross. This Pokemon might have gotten shafted in its debut series, but it still manages to shine whenever Ash decides to bring it back. This Pokemon is awesome and rarely disappoints. The only serious loss I can think of is against Tobias, but that's understandable, and against Spencer. But other than that, for the most part, Heracross kicks major ass. Best Dark type goes to Crocodile. This one was a bit tricky to choose, cause although Ash does have a couple of dark types, they're mostly known for their other typing instead. But I guess for me, the one that's the darkiest dark type is Crocodile. It is the only one that actually uses a dark type move after all. This Pokemon is awesome because of how unexpected it was. Pig Knight was built up to be Ash's Unova Ace, but once Crocroc joined the scene, that quickly faded. And once it fully evolved, it was a complete powerhouse. Best Dragon type goes to Gudra. Dragonite is an honorable mention for now, simply because it's fairly new and we haven't seen it much in action yet. But if it were down to personality alone, it would have definitely won. Now although Gujo was kinda useless during the Kalos League, before that, it was actually really dominant. It never really lost a battle, and not only was this Pokemon great cause of its battle strength, but also it had a pretty unique backstory. It was a Pokemon that was too weak to protect its homeland, so its whole goal was to become strong enough to do just that. And it did. Very satisfying. Best Electric type obviously goes to Pikachu. It's the only Electric type Ash has owned, and for good reason. Why would he need another one when he's got his first ever Pokemon? His best buddy! His trusty partner that can take down freaking legendaries! We already know about Pikachu, so there really isn't much I could say that hasn't already been said before. This Pokemon is iconic, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay as Ash's best Electric type till the end of time. Best Fairy type goes to Mr. Mime. Now this was a surprise. Apparently, Ash called Mr. Mime for his mom off screen way long ago when they first met, so it's sort of like a Bonnie and Dedenne situation. Since it's technically a Pokemon owned by Ash, he officially owns a fairy type. And psychic too. And gosh dang, can Mr. Mime battle? His battle style is a bit different from the typical Ash Pokemon, but the boy still makes it work. I like this. Best fighting type goes to Halucha. This is definitely the most fightiest of fighting type Pokemon Ash has owned. Halucha loves battling, and especially finishing off his opponents with his signature flying press. It's a Pokemon with a lot of pride and personality, which is awesome to see. And introducing Noibat and making Halucha take it under its wing, no pun intended, just helped develop it even more and show off a more fraternal side of him that we haven't seen before. Honorable mention goes to Riolu though, who's definitely got potential to be one of Ash's all-time greatest, period. But just like Dragonite, it's still too early to judge, so we'll just have to wait and see. Best Fire Type goes to Infernape. Now this one is pretty tough and the one I imagine to be controversial, cause we've got three top tier Pokemon to choose from. Charizard, Infernape, and Incineroar. Now Charizard's got awesome power, but that's really all it's got going for it. There was also that phase where it disobeyed Ash and nobody likes that. Incineroar had a great character arc as a Tauracat, but I feel like we were kinda robbed of seeing it at its full potential as an Incineroar. Infernape however takes the win cause it's got the best of both worlds. Not only was he a beast that almost never lost, but it also had one of the best developments out of any of Ash's Pokemon. And it was heavily tied into the epic rivalry of Ash and Paul. Best flying type goes to Swellow. This might come as a surprise since most would say Staraptor is the best, and I don't blame you. Everybody loves Staraptor, and that just shows how underrated Swellow is. First off, it just has way more personality. This Pokemon never gives up, even when the odds are stacked against it. And it turns out, Swellow actually has a higher win rate than Staraptor. The dude was taking names during the Advanced series. Too bad that same series is kinda forgettable. Best Ghost type goes to Gengar. 
This is Ash's first official ghost type. Forget Haunter, he never caught it, it doesn't count. Gengar not only has great personality, but it's also another Pokemon that's a beast in battle. He's quick, he's agile, he's spooky, and overall just has a very unique battle style. It's a great change of pace for Ash, and I love him so much. Best Grass Type goes to Sceptile. Out of the two fully evolved Grass Type Ash has, Sceptile is one that's not a complete disappointment. It's a great battler and, you know, was able to take out a Darkrai. That only helps it easily take this spot. But it's not just that, as it also has a really awesome and memorable personality. Who else thought it was cool to see it have that twig in its mouth? I sure did. Best Ground Type goes to Gliscor. I freaking love Ash's Gliscor. When I think of a Pokemon that's gone through great character development, I think of him. This dude started out as a wimpy Gligar that just wanted to be strong, and did achieve that thanks to all the hard work it put in. This Pokemon is also just really fun and lovable. Best Ice Type goes to Glalie. It's a mischievous Pokemon that loves to play pranks and use its Ice Beam on Ash. Glalie might have not gotten as much time to shine since it was obtained pretty late into Hoenn, but surprisingly, it did pretty well for Ash in the Hoenn League, which was awesome. Sorry Lapras, but you didn't really do much, just win that one surfing race or whatever. Best Normal Type goes to Snorlax. Everybody knows this freaking monster. He was pretty useless in the Orange Islands, but every time after that, he kicked major ass. The Johto League, Battle Frontier, and even Sinnoh League had Snorlax grab some wins. He really is an awesome and reliable Pokemon. Even when he's asleep and you think he'll disappoint, he still proves us wrong by showing off his awesome power. I love this dude. Best Poison Type goes to Naginoddle. God, that, that's such a stupid pronunciation. As a Poipol, this Pokemon did literally nothing except for like one Team Skull battle, and then it was released. But then he came back all evolved and was ready to do some damage. Now that's a lot of damage. Although his return was short lived, he did show off his abilities against Kakui's Lucario, which was an awesome battle, and even went toe to toe with Tapu Koko for a bit. Best Psychic Type goes to Nebi. Now this Pokemon wasn't technically called by Ash, but it was under his care and ownership for a while. Way longer than f***ing Haunter, that's for sure. Just like the Sun and Moon games, it started out as a cute little Cosmog that fully evolves into the legendary Solgaleo. And as a Solgaleo, it was still under Ash's command. Seeing Ash use this legendary Pokemon multiple times was so damn cool. And it's great to see that Nebi will always be loyal to Ash even if it's not under his care anymore. Best Rock Type goes to Lycanroc. During the first half of Sun and Moon, Lycanroc was definitely the ace of Ash's Alola team. It's the special Dusk form Lycanroc, so of course it was going to leave an impact on Ash's team. It came in clutch in a lot of battles, and even the most important one of them all, the Alola League Finals. Because of this Pokemon, Ash finally became a champion, so you know this doggo was going to take the spot. Get the hell out of here, Boldor. Best Steel type goes to Melmetal. This is Ash's only Steel type that he actually owns, so it's an easy pick. But even if that's true, it's still pretty great. Its relationship with God Rowlet is what really helped develop this Pokemon. It was so damn cute as a Meltan, and it just wanted to be as strong as his big bro. It's also great that it keeps its unique personality even after evolving. He was pretty much like a big strong man-child. By the way, I'm sorry for making the last couple of entries seem like a Sun and Moon Fest basically, but can you blame me? And lastly, best water type goes to Greninja. Probably the most obvious choice. Although Ash does have other great water types, nothing will compare to his Greninja. Thanks to the bond phenomenon, this Pokemon becomes... Satoshi Gekoga. This transformation not only acts like a mega evolution, allowing it to get a huge boost in power, but it also allows it to be in total sync with Ash. It's the one that took Ash all the way to the Kalos League Finals, and although... <sighs> he lost. There's no doubt in my mind that Ash wouldn't have made it as far as he did without it. Greninja really is Ash's best water type, and arguably one of, if not the best Pokemon he's ever owned. Thanks for watching everyone, and special thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Remember to live your life to the fullest, and have yourself a damn good one.